Watching this video for five minutes will not make you that amazing at doing any problems involving circuits. But if I can just get you some of the basics, then it's up to you then to put in the hard work, to do question after question after question, and soon everything should be quite easy. Now the most important equation that you need to know about is that V is equal to I times R. We've seen it at GCSE, we see it again at A-level, and it's gonna continue if you, if you do physics beyond this for the rest of your lives. So I say that this is one of the most important equations, that the potential difference across a component is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance. Now the other thing that you need to think about is that Q is equal to I multiplied by T. So if we know the charge, we know the current and the time. Next, we can say that the work done or the energy transferred is equal to VQ which means that, uh, that energy is equal to the potential difference multiplied by the charge. And finally, we can look at the power in electrical circuits. And we can say that P is equal to I multiplied by V. Now again, there are a couple of equations where we can say P equals I squared R or V squared over R. And that's all comes from this equation and this equation, equation here being sort of melded together. Now, the other thing you need to know is about Kirchhoff's first, I'm gonna write like this, and also his second law. Now his first law is all to do with current, where we can say that the sum of the currents going into a junction is equal to the sum of the currents going out of that junction. And Kirchhoff's second law says that the sum of the EMFs around any closed loop in a circuit is equal to the sum of the potential differences. So again, we need to know about Kirchhoff's first and second law. And finally, if we have resistors which are in series, we can say that the total resistance RT is equal to R1 plus R2 plus however many resistors there may be. If, however, the resistors are in parallel with one another, what we can say is that 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus uh, however many resistors, again, we have in uh, this combination here. So this is all you need to know. With this kind of basic toolkit, you can derive any other equation that you need to know. And you can also effectively solve any circuit uh, question that you might have or you might ever face at A level. So here we have an example of a very simple circuit. And perhaps we have an EMF, uh, which is a battery, which is maybe 12 volts. And what we're gonna assume is that there's negligible internal resistance. Now, perhaps we have three resistors. Now each resistance, uh, each resistor, sorry, has a resistance of 40 ohms. And all I'm gonna do is just write that next to the resistor. Now the thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the fact that I'm gonna write all the numbers in on this circuit. Now the circuits, if you draw any, don't have to be perfect, and you can write all over them, that's completely up to you. But what I'm gonna use is a green pen for my potential differences and voltages, I'm going to use a red pen for my resistances, and I'm going to use a, a blue pen for my currents. And that's just a way for me labeling this so actually I can understand what's going on. And what I can maybe do is investigate the current and the potential difference across different parts of this circuit. So first of all, what I want to try and do is to work out the current that is in this part of the circuit, and then maybe the current that moves into this bottom part, and also this part over here. Now, in order to do that, what I'm going to use is the equation V is equal to IR. And what I want to do is I want to find the total resistance of this whole circuit so I can work out the current over here. Now, to do that, I need to consider, first of all, we have two resistors in parallel. And what I want to do is find out their combined resistance. And what I can say is that one over RT is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2. Now, another way of writing this and trying to make RT the subject is I can say that RT is equal to R1 R2 over R1 plus R2. And if I do that, we know that 40 times 40 is gonna be 1,600 divided by 80. And if we put it into our calculator, we find that the total combined resistance of these two resistors, the 40 ohm resistors in parallel, is equal to 20 ohms. And that's kind of expected. If we have two things of the same resistance, we put them in parallel, then the overall resistance uh, halves. If we want to find the total resistance of this, uh, these two resistors and this one, which are now in series, effectively, we can sort of combine these two and say so that they've got an overall resistance of 20 ohms. And then that means the total resistance of these two resistors and this one is gonna be equal, because now we have effectively a 20 ohm resistor in series with a 40 ohm resistor, the total resistance is going to be equal to 20 plus 40, which equals 60 ohms. 
What I can then do is I can use my equation V is equal to IR to work out the current over here. Now uh, we can rearrange this to say that I is equal to V divided by R. Now the value for the potential difference uh, in this part for the whole circuit is going to be equal to 12 divided by our resistance of 60. And if we do uh, 12 divided by 60, we find that the answer is equal to 0.2 amps. And what we have here, then here is a value of 0.2 amps in this part of the circuit and also in this part of the circuit over here. Um, if we want to look at the current in this part and this part, well effectively we have 0.2 amps coming in and then what we're going to find is that we're going to have, uh, because these are the same resistance, a value of 0.1 amps flowing in this top part and 0.1 amps flowing in this bottom part of the circuit. Again, we can maybe think about Kirchhoff's first law, that if we look at this junction here, the current flowing in of 0.1 added to 0.1 is equal to 0.2 uh, that flows out of it. Finally, I can consider the potential difference across each part of the circuit. Now, if we look at the 40 ohm resistor, what we know about it is we know the current and we also know the resistance. So the current is equal to 0 0.2 multiplied by the resistance of 40, and this gives us a potential difference of 8 volts. So what we have is, although we've got this EMF of 12 volts, we have 8 volts over here. Now again, thinking back to Kirchhoff's second law, we know that the sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the PDs around any closed loop. And if this has a PD of 8 volts, that's 12, and that leaves 4 volts for this part of the circuit over here. And again, all I've done is I've just written the, in these values. And again, we've got a closed loop at the top and a closed loop that uh, goes around the bottom. And whatever the PD across this is going to be equal to the PD across that part there. So what we can do is take a very simple circuit and we can apply various equations. We can use V equals IR. We can look at uh, the combinations of resistors and maybe parallel and in series. And then we can use just these equations again and again to work out the current and the potential difference across all parts of a circuit. And that's everything that uh, you're going to be doing at uh, this kind of level. All it takes is just uh, writing on top of the diagrams, working out individually the various PDs, the currents uh, and the resistances of that whole circuit. And everything else will flow from there.